Welcome back. As conditions start to dry out here at Aldo Scribanti, we've still got some cool conditions on track. There's not going to be a lot of heat left in the rubber that's available, and we're now heading into the GNH Transport Extreme Supercars. Fantastic to see a massive field coming down to the Eastern Cape Circuit, including some brand new machinery that's been pulled out and all the way from Italy. Ricky is looking very forward to getting out there in his pool. Ferdinand is good to go, but he's going to have to fight hard to get to the front end to take on the likes of Charles Rangis and Franco Scabranti, who now gets out for the first time on his uncle's circuit to see what he can do in that Porsche. Lights go out, Rob, and we head down towards turn one. Have a look at the Porsche pulling away and look out for the back end of the field because uh, Charles Larangis at the last minute has decided to put the Aston Martin back in the truck and pulled out the second of those Lamborghinis. Of course, because it's got all-wheel drive. Yeah, this is what the crowd have come out to see. They want to see these supercars in action around the Aldo Scribanti circuit and uh, talk about a handful. These cars in these conditions, yes, you have the electronic stuff, the traction control and everything, but still, you've got to handle all that horsepower. And at the moment, they've made it through the first couple of sectors or you can see the Audi there of car number 22. That's Nick Davidson getting it all kinds of sideways. So... A long race ahead for these guys. Under breaking up into the hairpin, you can see Ferrari of Dutoy in second place. The baby beamer there of uh, Darby Olifier sitting in third, and he's trying to fend off the attack coming from the first of the bulls there. That is Charles Larangis. So the uh, Sudale Motorsport machine putting the pressure onto the back end of the baby beamer. Remember, the baby beamer is rear wheel drive. Here comes uh, basically rear wheel drive cars at the front end as well. But that four wheel drive of Charles Larangis is definitely going to be a difficult car to beat. And it's nice to have that in your trailer if you've got tricky conditions like this to pull out. Oh, did you hear those cars just lighting it up coming onto the front straight? I love Olivier with his bright lights on just to let everyone know that that baby beamer is coming. There we go, beamer versus the Lamborghini down the straight on the inside. He's trying to close the door. That's going to get very tight. There's no not much room to play with in turn one. Olivier holding firm and holding down that third position. Further back, you can see some fights there between Mark Detoy and Gianni Giannacaro. And then just behind them, Ant Blunden and Kish Patamba. Patamba taking some strain in the BMW Z4. This is a local battle. Look at that. Scribanti going at it with Nick Davidson. The two Audi boys putting on a big show. And it's great to have them in this pack of cars. There are a couple other guys that were thrown in. Of course, Ian Riddle and Faisal Kutsia joining this big pack of extreme supercars. But great to have a local content in with all the usual contenders. Now we go. Shaw Laranja is now starting to make his way through the field. Jonathan Detoy still right there. But it is Franco Scribanti going to be very hard and uh, difficult to get ahead of that Porsche. Here we go down the straight. Lamborghini power over Ferrari on the inside. Will he make it up? Yes, he does. Ticks off another spot. And now, does he have any answer for Franco out front? Franco's going to get in the Porsche 997 Turbo. Just all sorted now. Hopefully, going to be able to hang in there and fend off the attack coming from the bull. This is a fantastic effort from Faisal Kutsia fighting at the back. Oh! Oh, he gets a little bit locked up. And unfortunately, ends up on the grass. Should be able to get back on track, though. Hasn't got too much damage. It was just a little bit loud and a little bit too much on the loud pedal, I should say. Scribanti now putting the pressure on. The, Sc the Scribanti construction vehicle, the Audi, looking for a way through there on Ferdinand. And I can tell you, Ricky Giannacaro won't be happy about letting that car through. He's going to keep him behind no matter what. Have a look at that onboard telemetry as they get down into the Valvoline and into the hairpin. You can see how Ginger is going to have to be now on the throttle. He's really got to just play with that throttle oh so carefully. Franco Scribanti doing just that out front. Oh, we've got a change up there for second place. Does look like Jonathan Detoy is back up into second. Charles Larangis has made a mistake somewhere. Obviously in the complex section, yes. There he is still in third place. But obviously, we were just talking about getting on that throttle a little bit too early. Anything can happen in, this, in these conditions. And it certainly happened for our second place man who's now been promoted down to third in that beautiful Lamborghini. Let's see if he's able to do it now in the last couple of laps and catch up onto the back end of Jonathan Detoy. Detoy will be wary. He knows that the four-wheel drive system, it's basically an Audi Quattro system yep. that's in that car, will have the advantage in these conditions but are they going to catch Scribanti on his home track after all the work done by the Scribantis unfortunately Patamba pulling to the sideline in the Z4 his day is done but the Porsche is still in with a chance and I wonder if Franco is going to be able to get through these back markers and potentially take the victory look in the background though yeah. as they come up on the back end they are marked Detoy oh yes I think Jonathan Detoy is in trouble I do think so. Charles Larangis now with that back marker coming into the final turn here now. Which way does Larangis go? He goes on the inside. He's going to try and make a move in the final turn on Dutoy, who doesn't look like he's going any kind of defensive. It will be Franco Scribanti, but look behind. Yes, it is a Lamborghini of Charles Larangis who makes the move stick on the final turn ahead of Dutoy. Gets ahead and just gets to the line ahead of the Trans Africa Racing 430 Ferrari. And there you've got confirmation of those top three. Aldo Scribanti eventually comes through for fourth place, beating Ricky John Acaro to the line. Nick Davidson ahead of Ulifir and Craig Jarvis. Let's catch up with Scribanti. Thank goodness for my team and the hours they put in, you know, I mean, uh, finally this car is reliable, it's strong, it's working like clockwork, the, the setup's great, the power delivery is great, it's just perfect. So a bit of work to do now for the Lamborghini boys to see if they can get their first victory. 
And you can see the conditions are just getting worse and worse. And then we get a little bit of wrist bite and a little bit of dryness. Now let's go see what's going to happen now for race number two, Rob, as all these cars are going to make their way back out onto track for a second heat of the GNH Transport Extreme Supercars. Now you can see the sun is out, but certainly the rain is still very much on the track. So still wet conditions here. All the lights are on. You can see the spray is not quite as bad as it was in race number one. As we head into turn one for the first time, Arunji's trying to get around the outside there of uh, Scribanti going into turn one. I don't think he's going to make it stick, but what a sight it is now with the sun coming up and seeing all these beautiful supercars around Aldo Scribanti. Alvain Stien comes BMW all over the back end there of Craig Jarvis and Scribanti. That's the shot we got right now. Scribanti hanging on in the Audi ahead of Jarvis in the Ferrari. Behind them, as I said, that fire-breathing dragon of Alvain Stien comes. <laughs> it's got a massive flame out the side. You don't want to go anywhere near that car if you overtake it because it'll just burn you to death. That's beautiful stuff. And hats off to uh, the Aldo Scribanti circuit. The new surface really is uh, playing dividend here this weekend. Brilliant grip in these wet conditions. The drivers all complimenting how brilliant the new surface is. And at the moment, it does look like that Lamborghini. They need to get ahead of that Porsche. They need to win. Runs a little bit wide there, but can he pick up the slipstream? Here we go. The battle of the ages. Porsche versus Lamborghini versus Ferrari. Yeah, who's your money on? Oh, look, look at that Porsche. The Porsche's uh, top line speed seems to be the one that they've all got to try and beat down the straight. But look at how well the Lamborghini handles through this complex section. Turn one, the S's, and through hangar, it just pulls right onto the back end of that Porsche again. You're going to see the all-wheel drive system coming in again from the Lamborghini and its ability to catch the Porsche. But he's got to get through on him somewhere here. Otherwise, by the time that Porsche gets on the straight, he'll just pull away again. Now, you can see the Lamborghini certainly does have a little bit more downforce. He's able to get the traction down on the tar and get out of those turns. But to try and make a move, to close in on Franco out front is one thing. To try and make a move is a whole new scenario in itself. So let's see what he can do. Going into the final turn, he was really strong in race number one. Maybe that is his best bet. They're a little bit further down, Nick Davidson. But further up the field than uh, we saw him in race number one. So brilliant. There we go. Into the final turn, as I expected. But he runs wide. And uh, Franco Scribanti just says, my bad, you are not coming through. Yeah, oh, the Lamborghini is trying everything he can. He's going left, right, and off track even. Look at the Porsche pull away, though. That top oh, end man. speed of the Porsche is just phenomenal. And as you heard from Franco Scribanti in between the break, how well the team has worked to get this car to uh, now eventually perform at its almost perfection. And let's see whether or not he can keep it at the front end. Further back, Davidson taking on the second of the Lamborghinis there, the GNH Transport one of Ricky Giannacaro. He is in his element. I got to chat to him on the weekend, Rob. This man is like a kid with a cupcake. He is loving every minute. And so is his dad. Jimbo Giannacaro with a brand new carbon fiber body on that 430 Ferrari. And he's fighting there with Ian Riddle, one of the local contenders. The Riddler giving Jimbo a bit of a run for his money. Yeah, look, good little battle further down the field there. And like you said, Riddle, brilliant drive in front of the local fans here. Good drive also a little bit further up there for Craig Jarvis running in a lonely sixth place at the moment. Alvain Stienkamp also in seventh place there. And, and Blunden, brilliant drive there as well. Look at the front of the field. Oh, it's getting very racy. Scribanti is side by side with uh, Arangis. Oh, and Scribanti spins out and into the tie wall and out of the race. Oh, man, that is a massive moment here in race number two. You see a replay. Yeah, he just tries to square it on the inside. Just gets a little bit wrong, gets it sideways and no controlling that spinning car. Yeah, once it gets on the grass, he's just a passenger and it slams into oh. the Oh, no. destroying all the hard work they've just put into that car. Can you believe that? Not what Franco Scribanti wanted, that is for sure. And he's now getting out the car. Let's catch up with him down in pit lane. Uh, look, you know, I spoke to Graham Nathan. He was standing out there. He's a very experienced driver because I thought I got taken out. And Graham says, no, it, 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 you didn't really. It was, it was a sheer mistake. He got his, his wheel onto the, the concrete and he stepped sideways and I was in the way. So it seems like it's just a racing incident and I was unfortunately in the way. Yeah, I would say for sure that is a racing incident. That man out front, Charles Orange, is on his final lap. He'll certainly be seeing it as a racing incident, but that's not what you want to see, is a beautiful Lamborghini and a Porsche going side to side, and you don't want to be putting duct tape on those cars, but unfortunately, ending Franco's chances of the double win here today. So it will be the Lamborghini there of Charles Orange, who will take the race number two win here. Jonathan Dutoy up into second place. Davi Ulifier and the baby Beamer, if he can hold down that third place, what a drive there for him. Yeah, he's been fighting hard with Nick Davidson all race long, but as the chicken flag comes out, it is a Rangis to take the second victory. He passes the stricken Porsche on the sideline. There's lots of work now to be done by Scuderia Scribanti to get that Porsche back up and running by the time we get to Swatkops. Detoya second, Darby Ulafir in third, Nick Davison beats John Okoro for the top five. Let's catch up with Charles and find out how his day went in the Lambo. More than that, I'm happy, happy for the cars. First run in South Africa, it did so well. And, um, you know, to do it in the rain, the four-wheel drive system is amazing, really it is. So, um, yeah, just a, a good weekend, um, a bit dampened now with, uh, with Franco being out, but a, a good all-round weekend. All this Extreme Festival action is proudly brought to you by Investcan Chemical Logistics, Bridgestone Tyres, 
and GNH Transport.